coming to this uh, special dialogues and development. Um, I'd, uh, I'd like to thank you, uh, to thank our speakers, and so for your answer, uh, for being with us uh, today. As always, it's very special so, so to welcome you to the DPU. And um, uh, as many of you will know, um, Sumsuk was the first director of CODI, the Community Organization Development Institute in, in Thailand. And um, she's currently an advisor on their board, but also a chairperson of the Banman Con Program Committee. And it's exactly the, the Banman Con Program that we're going to look at today, a rather special and unique <coughs> program that has almost a generation of a life in, in Thailand, in the cities of Thailand. And I, I, what we've asked Sum Suk to do is to reflect, <laughs> is to reflect on the history of, of that program. Um, and not just to reflect on the history in terms of um, of, of telling you about it, and of which many of you already know uh, quite a bit about it, but also just to reflect on what worked, what didn't work, and how it is that a program like that can sustain itself over such a long time. How does it maintain its relevance, uh, 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 and, and how does it maintain what it's really first out intended to do in terms of housing the urban poor? And, um, and of course, everything that Sum Sum does and thinks about and breathes and eats and sleeps <laughs> has to do with the community-driven process in, in the Banman Kong program. So uh, obviously, that is going to be a central story in, in, in that process. But what's also so important and where Sum Sum's work has been so valuable has been um, also appreciating that that process has to work at different scales and it has to work with government at different scales and hence the story becomes at the same time more complex but also very valuable and, and very exciting. So with, I'll stop there and hand over uh, to some book. Thanks, Helen. Thank you so much, everybody, to come for this attendance. Uh, it's been an honor to be invited to uh, chair you what you've been doing on, at, or trying to do <laughs> in such a scale in Thailand, and actually it's called to Asia as well, uh, in, in such a very prestigious place, and, uh, and uh, the student who, and, and professor, of course, who are going to be a very important uh, actor in your country when you go back, definitely, yeah? So I just have you the true story, okay? My thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> the truth which after me <laughs> to tell you. Uh, Kellen proposed the, uh, the name of the presentation, looking back, actually she put it, looking forward, looking back and looking forward. Nah? Uh, I make it going forward. <laughs> I hope it's going forward well. And, uh, and uh, this theme is like easy and it's like very difficult huh? because I've been involved from the very beginning, even before, and all the politics, all the process. So it's a lot of uh, details, lots of story, lots of process, lots of development inside. No? Uh, but I have to try to finish within 30 to 40 minutes. So we have more time for discussion and I hope you come up with questions, yeah? And, and this is appropriate, appropriate scale for a good <laughs> discussion. And there are many points that Kellen raised. I hope uh, you could bring it into question. And I enjoy more answering questions than this kind of presentation, but it will be a lot of uh, picture, 50 slides <laughs> for you to see, yeah? Okay. So it, this is uh, the Cody, what we talk about. It's a very unique kind of <coughs> institution which supports the people. You have the system of the government where you start from the ministry, da, 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 and go down, and then uh, to the layer of community. So you have procedure, you have rules, regulation, 
at the end of the day, the UN was saying that the, dis the, the last mile disappeared somewhere. <laughs> so sometimes it doesn't reach the people on the car. Huh? So this is a different, totally different process. This is based on people. People are the actor. People are the doer. People are the owner of the project. So this is the institution support community people to be the active actor. Yeah? And we pass the money to them. Urban Lulo. So they make change. Yeah? So you're going to hear a new kind of institution. And I think the whole world should change into this direction. <laughs> yeah? And it's more natural. Uh, only it needs to be balanced, it needs to be reasonable, it needs to, to be checked among themselves, whatever. That's the art and that is the sign of this kind of institutional arrangement. Anyway, since we try first, <laughs> I share with you and hope you could find a way how to organize more such an institution because there's no limit to scale, huh? because people are the scale anyway. Yeah. So being an institution, today I'm not going to talk about CODI as such. It's institution is one issue, but Karen asked for the Bandman Comb, but I, I would show you the relationship, and it's very important relationship. So we become CODI in the year 2000. We set up the Urban Community Development Office before, uh, about eight years before we become CODI. We merged with the Lula Fund, then we, we have two funds putting together, so we have the money, <laughs> a revolving fund. So we quite rich from the very beginning, not only the money, but also the activity of the two huh, putting together. Which means since the year 2000, which is the beginning of the new millennium, uh, we are the organization of the new millennium, I would say. <laughs> I would like to put it like that, yeah? the organization of the new millennium to work for the urban and the rural, so no boundary for the people process across the country. Yeah? So we have up to today allowed, what, 300, 100, 200 million dollars yeah? about for the revolving fund. Well, this is the one that I spent the time working this morning. <laughs> Uh, that in, in change, and this show the coding process moving up to, to this uh, part, which is the nation, nation, National Abandon Code, citywide program. But see, in the year, uh, in the 60s to the 80s, similar to most of the country, you have urbanization, you have problems, you have eviction, you have institution in the society, which is nothing to do with the reality of the cloud problems. Yeah? And, and then it's a frustration, it's problematic for, for this stage of urbanization in Asia, not only here in Thailand, in many of the countries. And then with that problem, you come into this stage, a stage of a little bit of projects, knowledge, gathering, people start organizing and linking and so on. And this is important process of start learning about some possible solution. Huh? I, would, I would think that many of the project support in the world are staying at this stage. Yeah? The important thing is that you move into that stage and that stage, and then you can go into scale. Right? Now from this stage, always the different project, different knowledge, Different network are not linked together. I own my project. If this is my baby, that is your baby. You know, it's all scattered. I, 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 I bet you, you can think about your country. <laughs> and it stay there and die. Yeah? It's just like a little bit of flesh and <laughs> here and there. Yeah? But all these experiments will only be useful when you're able to link it up into this program. And you need a political process. You need the right uh, process, how to gather all that scattered wealth, I, I call the project, the knowledge, as existing wealth, huh, into a pool. 
into a process of building a new possibility in a bigger way. And this, this has been the stage in, uh, in, the 90, in, the, in 1992, we were able to invite all the key project, the key success, the key experiment, and brought them to a discussion table. Yeah? And it's very interesting because many of the institutions or policy may come from the World Bank, from government. Someday they have a good idea, this and that, no? And it's not work. But the thing that works always come from the good project the good possibility that exists. Yeah? Why is possible? How you do it? What are the conditions, this and that? So when you put together all the realistic activity, experience, uh, good, good way of doing whatever, into a discussion, and able to build it into a system, yeah? that's what we call changing from project to a program. And this is a, an important shift. Yeah? Uh, of course, it's not uh, easy for one day you start doing that. So you have to play the politics, how you survive. At the same time, you make, make yourself visible and, and also search for, for the way how to institutionalize and then be yourself, stand on your own feet yeah? as much as possible. And this attempt is very, very important, I tell you, because we are development uh, people. In development process, we, we should not enjoy a technical development activity only. Yeah. How to do it? A, B, C, you know? Uh, that we should, do, we should know, that we should understand. But to make a change into a bigger uh, social change, a bigger uh, movement, a bigger process, it needs to change from program into institutional, into institution, except by the national system as a policy, as something you have your own uh, process, yeah? This is a nationalizing, institutionalizing, is a nationalizing of what it's supposed to be, yeah? From the learning here, what is right, people should be the key actor how to put everything together, move into the program. You find the proper political process after you wait for your time and see how you tune it up, how you get the political climate ready, how to make your bridge and make a click. And there's a time always. Either what kind of government you're going to face, there will be possibility. And once you could, we could come into this institutionalization, when we become Cody in the year 2000, as mentioned earlier, then you can go big now. You, you can use the institution to allow the people all over the country the space. Because we say this is the institution to support community all over the country, to be active actor, to be active doer, to work with the government. Yeah? So suddenly, community all over the country have uh, be legitimate huh, to this setting up. You grant them the status to, to take initiative, to take a move, to get together as a network. And that is really, very important. And then you could go wide into whatever scale up to your designer. Although you are the institution, it doesn't mean ah, now we are happy. We, get the status, we get the money, and go to sleep, no? You die in the next two days. Because the problem will be there all the time with the, the institution itself, with the people who are not happy to have your institution. So institutionalization to grant the public status, policy support, secure regular public funding, support at national scale or city scale, can and legitimize development status to community, civil society, and the city. If you have this big dream, it means we have a lot of design to do. Right? And many of the people, I bet, in a in hundred people, there may be two or three 
who want to do it like this. Most of the people will say, oh, we should draw a line. We should draw a line. We should not move outside of the, uh, the line. We should make clear focus. We should limit ourselves to what we can do, huh? you know? And this is a start of being bureaucrats, you know? And most of the people are like, uh, you start being bureaucrat too early, too easy, you know? We have to dream big. You have to put yourself outside of the possibility that, oh, this organization is going to be uh, the freedom, hmm? the power of the de development activity by the people, by the civil society in a big way. So how we decide that? How we make it their freedom? How we make it new initiation that spread out all over the place? Huh? Huh? One institution can already make a big democratic change if you do it, do it properly. Yeah? So do think big. And with that institution, we start the Ban Man Kong, one of the program. We have the key Ban Man Kong program, which is housing development. We have the community welfare program, which now organized in around 90% of all the world in the country. We have community council, which is about 95% of all the world in the country. So you have different things uh, to be the, the tools for the people to organize themselves. But I'm going to talk only about the Ban Man Kong, OK? Uh, and it's the key, because the Ban Man Kong actually start from this stage. Actually start from this stage in a scatter good project here and there. Then we build it into a new funding support to the UCDO. And we able to support up to about, about 40, 40, 50 projects, yeah? Which means new implementation to the flexible funding. And it show very interesting uh, possibility. Then you put together into the citywide. Now this is a state that move from the project or some program, small program in the same place into a national intervention. And that is a breakthrough. You see. Plan of grading should not be project by project. It should be city by city. Yeah? And it's much better to do it city by city because all the actors in the city all the information in the city, all the system in the city will tune to, uh, to have a more common picture. Huh? And, and that's the way to deal <coughs> with slum, upgrading at scale. You address city by city, you don't address project by project. Because you have a lot of pockets, you have a lot of isolation, but you deal with it as a system of change, system of land, system of organization, system of uh, information, system of knowledge, system of implementation huh? as a team. Huh? And with that possibility, now we move to the rural Ban Man Kong as well, which means not only urban. Lulo has eviction all the time, different form of eviction. Uh, income, uh, I mean outright physical eviction, uh, no planning, huh? uh, a lot of poverty there, a lot of disaster there. So why not? So we have the rural Ban Man Kong, but not building houses. But all the world getting together and see how they can, can repair it, replan it, uh, secure land and housing, and have a lot of common ecological system, uh, uh, maybe a, a place uh, to, to, to do things so that they can, they can be sustained together as a group. No? There will be some example later. And then we come up with several other kind of housing support for the eviction, for the uh, really poor, the poorest of the poor, for disaster re rehabilitation. So this whole thing came because we can institutionalize it. Huh? And, and, and you can do more. You can play the game. For instance, in certain number of provinces along the Andaman Sea, six provinces, where the former deputy prime minister who elect from that part, <laughs> he said, we should do something with the slum upgrade. Very good. So we link these six provinces into a network. And we said, we should have a plan for the six pro provinces. Yeah? 
And then we send a team of the young professional to with the community people make a survey, urban and rural, make all the information of the six provinces, get community to start working and start proposing for project. So you use his golden word <laughs> of trying to do something with the Andaman provinces. <laughs> and then you set up a committee and, 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 and get him to be a chairperson. <laughs> and then you, you make a political process where you go to the ground and start making a move, uh, six provinces go together, yeah? something like that. So all that would be possible when you have a national uh, platform like this kind of institution, institution to, to, to work on, okay? This is just explanation, almost finished the time already, sorry. Okay, this is to, to tell the form of institution. Sorry, I'm going a little bit on this part, but I think it's quite important. You, you have about, I mean, in a simple way, three kind of institution to think about. But this is the, the normal top-down. And people feel comfortable to be under the top down. Oh, we have regulation, we have things to report, it has to go into the hierarchy, and so on. But it's so dangerous. And this is not easy to be a people driven approach. Huh? Only tell the people what to do, <laughs> follow me. And since most of the Thai organizations are quite top down, and this is very, very difficult. Yeah? And try not to be in this trap. If, if we want to spread out the development. This is what Cody chose to be. Yeah? Uh, you, you get the power and the budget from the government, but you try to make an institution in such a way that open up to communities, and they are in the structure also, and you have civil society and many other. So it's a new kind of organization, not top down, but horizontal. Many of the people love to be totally independent. So you are too independent that you are not in the ongoing struggle process. And struggle, uh, daily struggle, regular struggle is very important. We, every single year, Cody have to go into a fiscal budget, you know, uh, requirement. So you propose certain number of budget, amount of budget, and then you have to go to the parliament. I was the first director. In the first couple of years, when we go to the parliament, the MP said, no, what are you doing? Why not doing this? Why you do, do it like that? And call uh, 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 us in the big meeting, right? So it means you are very inexperienced dealing with the politician. And you've been condemned by them of doing silly things, proposing the silly kind of projects. And we are more well equipped this day with that contempt. <laughs> this day when you go to the parliament, you have the network all over the press. We have the name of the MP uh, who sit in the uh, budget committee. And the community leader would have to talk to their MP, okay? <laughs> Explaining what the whole thing is about lobbying, talking, uh, challenging, whatever. So all the MP all over the country have been tapped and discussed by the community people. So you, you've been uh, learning, and you know uh, how to do it, and you are part of the legitimate budget arrangement every year. Yeah? This is what we learn. So try not to be too independent. Yeah? It go, may, may make you more and more narrow. Only busy about yourself, <laughs> busy about your thought, uh, busy about what I want to do. No, uh, Life has to be difficult because we have a very big actor and the world allow us, which is not so pleasant actually, but what to do. So the key element of this code is to support funding directly to community for community-driven, community-managed development. And we can ban the stiff government budget and the revolving fund as tool to support people. No? And this support would not only go to community, but strategically 
we have to build local partnership. Remember that when we do any project, don't only do project. Don't only do project. But to do the project, you can set up a committee. You can get, get so many people to be involved by being your own baby, huh? by not being the baby of many people <laughs> in the city or something. Huh? You have to translate every single project into uh, the element to build new relationship, new collaboration, new bridge, new possibility. No? Uh, so every single project and financial support could be a strategic uh, intervention into something which is passive, which is not happening. No? So, so this is an important part, how we use the regular government budget to support, to activate huh, this process where people are the actor with the other. And we believe in the partnership, collaborative process, co-production. And this is very important to be proactive. Yeah? Uh, we have to understand all the steepness, the difficulty of the system of the whatever, because they, they, all of them stay in their way. No? But how, how to find active community process where the other are moving along. A co-production is important. A co-production in itself is a change of political relationship, is a reform in itself through the project, right? So it is so important that it lead to a change of politics, huh? a change of relationship, yeah? and a joy on own owner. Huh? The last one is, oh, we operate at scale, so it covers the whole country, uh, 400 cities about, and the rural provinces support, and it support area base, which is very important that you don't look at issue base only. You, you could at the issue base, you know what it's like, but the issue base lead to the new bridging. Uh, the linking of the activity, the network, uh, the policy, the people, whatever. No? So, earlier base means collaborative process, yeah? mean more holistic, being mixed. Yeah? And that is very important. And what is lacking in our society, especially in Thai society, where you have a lot of uh, vertical intervention, particularly for that issue, yeah? and then bleed. Yeah? So, the area have been chopped into pieces huh? <laughs> according to the different ownership of the organization. So in the Baiman Kong, we, we have four key elements which we think, we think is important. Uh, we look at the number of the poor as uh, the scale, right? And, and how should we equip that into a demand led implementing state uh, as much as possible. So you have the, the key, four key points that active demand driven. The citywide uh, fight, develop the finance to facilitate a lot of uh, uh, process development and integrated and holistic approach. Follow the former point. And this is uh, the kind of picture, like when you start the citywide, you go into, this is Nakon Sawan, no? You go to check all the low-income people area. You link them together and build the network. <coughs> so what type of land, what type of conditions, whatever. And in doing so, in doing so, most of the case we will use university to do a survey. Nothing to do with the people on the ground. If we believe in the community-driven approach, this means we get all these people who stay in this community to do a survey. Mapping. By doing a survey, they start going to all the different communities, see things and so on, and then let them come to a talk and see what the difference mean and how to go. Equip them with the survey. Equip them with the difference they face and how to use the difference to see what would be the right election to go for themselves. 
We support CPY like this, like that picture. I put this word to say the key to development at scale is the multiplication of development actor, actually capacity also. If you want scale, it means you have multiplication of actors. And this has to be thought very clearly. Multiplication of actors means what? Multiplication of capacity means what? Only we reach that, we could reach the scale. Not one institution, the slum of creating office somewhere, start making implementation of this and that and da 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 using the limited number of people to do so many things. Yeah? Centralizing. Centralizing doesn't mean multiplication. Yeah. Multiplication. So many actors huh, come into active play. And have this picture of the city. Have everybody participate. The local authority, the university, everybody. It's the issue of everybody. It's the issue where everybody is a part of. Yeah? So you equip them with the possibility to develop it together. So by working, you're changing, you uh, capture the new possibility at the same time. Uh, but this is in Thai, sorry. <laughs> it's sort of saying, Cody, getting the, the government support, government policy, and you pass it to this arrangement, the local authority, the academic, the NGO, and community to work together, to plan together. And this is a, a quite lively kind of picture where you allow the people to make a survey and understand the, the, the difference, uh, the, the figure, the information, make it scientific to the, the easy work they have been doing. And planning, uh, planning the house, planning the communities. And we architect. How many architects here? I was architect. <laughs> architects are too lazy too. <laughs> or maybe it, it's more interesting for us to do the planning. So we start uh, quickly uh, making the plan. Is there? Uh, if we make people architect uh, to their community planning, is an, a way to empowering them. A way to empowering before planning. They need to understand uh, what to plan, why to plan, how to plan, and the reality in which exists, how to reorganize it. And if we do it with the group participation itself, they themselves plan how they want to do a new possibility together. Yeah? So let people be the architect, uh, using their story and content to adjust to the plan together. That is a really, really interesting and, and lively process of planning. No? Uh, then start the saving. So in, in, in do it, doing the upgrading, you have to go to many key elements with information, you understand your finance, and you uh, organize more, a better financial condition. You get together as a pool, and the community fund is a bridge between the, the, the external form of finance and the people, very irregular, very informal finance. So you build a platform between the two unfriendly systems huh? to adjust the platform, the financial platform, with the unsteady system and the two, to be able to speak to the proper system up there. That's very simple to explain like that. Yeah? So you need to set this uh, system in the community and link everybody to that. Yeah. And, uh, and if you have the community-driven process, it means the form is not a problem. The form is to come after the people. The form would come after the condition. Yeah? So whatever the condition, if there's a need for reconstruction, you do a reconstruction right in the middle. From the very first map to this one, it's the same community. So you demolish all, you reconstruct the whole thing. <laughs> Why? Because sometimes in the existing slum, you have big house, you have small house, you have rental, you have all different miscellaneous arrangements. And to, it's too difficult to equalize it or to make it close to, I mean, the right 
to deliver the new ride, it's not so easy to adjust in the old setting. Sometimes it needs uh, a, a system of reconstruction. Yeah? And if people do together, they would understand the level of affordability or the, or the land sharing. Uh, or move to the nearby place, or reblocking, or even just the upgrading. And, and we, we have gone into a lot more, you, you say, looking forward. We have a lot more challenging projects this day to work with the private sector also in the land sharing project and to find a way how business opportunity will be able to contribute to the change in the people, the poor people economy. How, how not only the land, but the financial symbiotic relationship between the, the com existing community and the new uh, business development could be possible. So we are trying that as well for the time being. But this is to, uh, sorry, to come back to the financial model. Cody passed the funding to the co-op. So people have to link together as a co-op and then the co-op uh, provide to the subgroup. Yeah, you, you may listen to this uh, several times. This is the old diagram. But this an, is an important breakthrough. Huh? So I cannot make a presentation without this picture. Right? And this makes the, uh, the possibility for the improvement of any whatever form possible. But you are not stick with the form. Huh? You're not saying, oh, this is going to be flat, this and that. Form easy for architect. Why architect have to stick with the form? Uh, we have to stick with the condition and the people, and then we make the form accordingly. Yeah, and then finance will follow that. Yeah, but of course you have to work on the finance of each family and how to go with that as a group, how to manage and so on. And not not that very difficult. This is a garbage community. So you have a big change from the former to the new one. And this is a more recent project. You change, this is in the center of the city. You change from this to that, and all in to, to be a new flat. So we're going more to the medium rise. Unfortunately, the Batman Cove has to be changed. Otherwise, very, very difficult. This is a project where you have a the redevelopment, uh, uh, the, the, form, the former situation were all the squatters, huh? yeah? and it changed. After the terminal station have, have construct, then all the hinterland become uh, the land that the whole society will be facing. So it means that there, there is no limit to scale. You can go to a scale like the redevelopment project, huh? but people have the right to stay and the area could be developed at the same time. We go more into this kind of type this day. Yeah. And this is the famous canal project where you change the condition like the, the lip up there, that all kinds of uh, squatting in, invading the canal so the drain couldn't go and you have flooding problems and so on. And then we were able to negotiate and it's finished and it happened. Uh, and, and, and then it changed. So everybody have the right and the security for 30 years. Uh, they have the welfare, they have the organization, they have the community funds and so on, and different uh, social development program. And, uh, and it's a more than 10,000 from the very first uh, initiative. Now it developed to more number of canal where they're invading. So you reset the system. and. Which means the big program like that becoming more and more possible. Uh, the sort of old setting that has been there for decades, for centuries, huh? all these quarters, and the fight every time there is flooding in the, in the city. The, oh, the poor invading. And they want to clear up the poor, but not do anything with the water, <laughs> with the drain. <laughs> no? And you've been accused all the time. So whatever the reason, don't go too much to that. Uh, just find a way that the water could be cleaner huh? with a better equipped system. The people could also be better. The city is better. Environment is better. So everything better. What's the problem with that? 
and it's affordable. Because when people live in the slum, it's not free of charge, not all of them. They have to pay higher huh, in the rental arrangement. Anyway, yeah. So this is the kind of the scale of change. Uh, this is the former slum. And you see, we have to uh, make it block by block. Huh? Like that. Like that. And the citywide upgrading. Yeah? Uh, city by city. Uh, there are a number of cities, more than 10 cities, which could go on into this kind of scale. This is a city where they have more than 50 slum communities, and now they're able to develop more than 30, still negotiating this and that, and then uh, uh, develop it. Yeah? So it goes like that, and totally managed by community and the city, with this diagram. Yeah? Uh, th yeah, they set up this structure. This is a pala local uh, authoritative structure. <laughs> It's a structure in which we have the network of community linking every community. And then when you make a movement all the time and you do, do work, huh? you're able to make the city authority set up a local development committee where you bring all the key organizations to sit in the same table. And, and this uh, network become an active actor. So they have a lot of activity, which exist by the local authority. This is a collaborative local development mechanism. So the, the, the project, the Baman Kong, uh, is able to allow the people this joint governance structure, in which they are the active player. Yeah? You don't have this structure in any city. You have only the local authority who act like a contractor, doing this, doing that, using the law, no? But here, with the emergence of the community network, which is active, which have information, which they have funding, which they have energy, they're able to change the collaborative system into that, yeah? And then this happened to many of the cities, uh, most of the cities. Yeah? Any city that don't have this collaborative mechanism seem to have a lot of problematic condition uh, among each other. And we enter the several different kinds of housing support from the government. Since the urban Ban Man Kong, rural Ban Man Kong, to the poorless Ban Man Kong, to uh, the, the homeless, people who sleep on the street, huh? they're able to get together. You will see the picture later. And, and this is some of the picture to show you about the rural Ban Man Kong. I'm, I'm quite proud about this project because this is the way that we could go back to the roots and replan the thing. So this is uh, 40 minutes already, mm -hmm. yeah? okay? We'll go quickly. And this is the people who used to invade the mangrove forest and they've been uh, categorized as a uh, squatter to be evicted and for so many decades. So the key point is to let these people have a more secure settlement acceptable to the mangrove forest department. They take care of the mangrove forest. They have their livelihood with the mangrove forest and, uh, and they redevelop their life. And this has been done in a big way now. We, we get the government uh, approval for all the mangrove forests. Yeah. That community can now be organized and propose for the housing project in which they have to uh, commit to take care of the mangrove forests yeah? and to use it for their livelihood and to sort of help uh, uh, in the ecology condition. Huh? Whatever, yeah. So, so it is a good thing to start a lot of very interesting development, uh, all the uh, coastal area, yeah. So this is uh, uh, something happening now, forward. Yeah. Uh, the the community, uh, uh, they in the whole world they make a survey who who are the poor 
who have the insecure situation and they fix themselves using the, the, the program for re-establishing uh, the status of everybody and to bring back the, uh, uh, the local community. This is uh, what they took from the rich. And, you know, this is a exercise crowd, yeah, and able to negotiate with the military. And then uh, it, it is a special program to get the young. There were people in the urban area, uh, young generation, who feel tired with the uh, urban life. So they're able to get together and go back. And it's like bringing back the, uh, the young generation huh, into the rural. And uh, uh, the land has been provided, so they build a community and be a part of the larger community. Seriously. And there's a model in which uh, what is a sustainable one family uh, living condition in which they don't need to have debts and uh, problem, uh, economic problems and other, and link together into the whole world. New system of plan like that. Or the feature for village. Yeah, you have a lot of uh, coastal community where people are squatters. And the uh, feature folk village are not in the slum upgrading category for so many countries. So it has to go into this also, yeah? So now we sort of broaden the Bayman Kong into all these insecure community all over the place and let the district and uh, the ward, the community network take care of that to work together. Uh, we have the welfare housing for the poorest. And we don't do it in such a way we go to do it. We let the provincial uh, committee to make a survey who are the very poor who live in a bad condition on whatever land. And then each year, uh, they would make a plan of, for themselves and they start using their own labor force, linking with whatever existing organization to fix it. Very simple, very easy. You distribute the money only. You just introduce the possible way in which they get together, they have information, they know where they're going to fix, how to fix, and so on, and let it be their work. Huh? Very cheap is something like one unit is about 50, no, $500, 500 pounds, 500 pounds per unit. So it's very little money. The very good uh, thing about this kind of development is that amount of money is not important. The little money, the better. <laughs> because with little money, they have to think more. Yeah? The little money will allow them the possibility. Ah, oh, yeah, we have the resource. But the resource is not enough. So how to find a possible resource yeah, to make it possible? So you have to link with the system, you have to link with the leads, you have to put together your own money, this and that. And it builds collaboration. It builds a joint uh, success, a joint, uh, a joint implementation, you know? So don't bother too much about the size of money, but the system of money that allow this collaborative process to be possible is more important. And this is a poor list, you know? These are the people who sleep on the street. So they build their center. They're able to make demonstration to the government and get some budget, and they uh, make the poorest, the homeless people center. I mean, the people really sleep on the street, take care of their own center, and develop their new life as a group. And it go to Chiang Mai, where the is working. This is the place where you ask the, the camp member who worked in Chiang Mai, was able to change the squatter yeah, into this uh, new development, and this could grow vegetable, right? Instead of you have the sort of a, yeah, the retaining the wall, yeah, which is uh, not good for the environment. He, he may uh, use the block where you can have the soil and you grow vegetable. So today you have a, a lot of green area where you can eat and yeah, <laughs> along the way, yeah, it's a big change. Uh, so, according to the plan, we could 
cover up to more than a million units uh, and, and uh, all the social activities. And just a few pictures to show you that this kind of mobilization is very, very, very important. It's a massive number of people. So once the COVID happened, if you are poor, you would affect more with the COVID problem. So you use the network, you, need, you use this collaboration to make a better COVID, COVID protection and, uh, and development process. And this, this will show you some picture. So Cody support the budget to the network. And the network linked with the different government organization, the NGO. And then they also link with the low income groups, the squatter, this and that. You, you go to the survey, you get the people into a meeting. So what are we going to do with the, with the COVID to cover as many community as possible? And uh, we support several stages of the budget. And it's, it's not the same. Nah? If you, you work with the community, try to chip the objective and the way to work all the time. Don't do it the same way. Yeah? Try to do it differently so the people adjust themselves into a different setting. And that's the way to make intervention uh, more well-rounded. Yeah? Uh, so the network was the one who worked with the different community and different community go into the plan. So you don't have a big uh, health worker here. A health worker is some, somewhere there also. But you use the network to deal with COVID in a big way in the Thai community process. This is the kind of information in which they check every, every family. Yeah? Whether you have vaccine, yeah? whether you have the serious uh, illness, whether you have this and that or not. So community become the tools of change, the tools of protection the tools of uh, facilitating what would be a better healthy condition. Also some pictures tell better, yeah? like that. And community kitchen to, uh, to make the collective kitchen <laughs> distribute food to all the family. A physical food is one thing, but the way in which they work together, that is very important. Even the isolation center. You have the government isolation center in which you are really isolated. <laughs> especially, especially you are the poor, if you can find a bed, you are very lucky. Yeah? No, uh, there are classes and whatever. So we make community isolation center. We learn how we do it. Yeah? And uh, it's very, very, very warm because you are close to your friend in the community. Community also have to be trained how to do it. And see the spot, uh, the, green, the green dot are the community that Cody has support the COVID activity. Yeah? The yellow are the, the overall Bangkok communities. Okay, sorry, huh? I finish now. Uh, so what, what to look forward, to look forward, uh, perhaps we need more dynamic Cody. What I told you all this story is a lot of movement, a very big, gigantic process. Anyway, uh, there are five points which is important for the time being that we are moving forward into developing a joint committee managed development network to link at the provincial level, cities, what? So it means at, at the city, at the provincial level, now the people will be more and more take o over uh, the worker activity. So they will be the actor to manage the process and the budget and uh, the uh, whatever criteria, the assessment, the, uh, the report, whatever. No? And the second thing, we were trying to it's now developing the provincial housing development plan. But something real is the city plan, the city housing plan, citywide housing plan, the rural plan, and the provincial plan. The province is a place where all the network come to meet with all the government institutions, land, uh, agriculture, everything. 
why don't we have a housing development plan, urban and rural, where everybody know, every, everybody will go for that. You have a clear demand side, you have a clear actors, you have a clear system, you get them into your game. Yeah? So a provincial housing plan would be some, something more realistic than the national plan. Uh, Kodi should become more on the third point as a spring springboard. So you, you are the springboard to allow different uh, collaboration, different local process to happen according to their strength, potential, and design. So this public organization allow a lot of public support to diverse uh, different development activity. Yeah? Uh, we need more knowledge, capacity, initiative to be support and publicized. We, not, we are still very manual, you know. Uh, we need to play more with the technology. And that is a stage that we are developing. We, if we do well, we could change the local politics and democratization through development participation. Uh, this is a point, uh, especially speaking with the D at the DPU here. De development intervention is so powerful to bring new power chips. Development is not a technical giveaway thing, but development is a, is a space for bridging, for making change, adjusting relationship, yeah, and deliver at the same time. So using development as a change in the power, in the perception, in the relationship, in the participatory uh, situation. Development is so powerful because there's no politics in the word development. <laughs> the politician uh, will, will agree with all development activity. Huh? But how development activity will be used as intervention and space for bridging, for making more balance, for adjusting, for make the development activity cheaper, more reasonable, go to the direct actor, activate them, empowering them, bridging the gap of whatever exists. So you have to think about development in the more changing context. <laughs> A powerful change to, to the context of change. Anyway, I'm not much in that, so I can see it. <laughs> OK? But this is the last picture to say what Cody is about. If you have a headache, sorry for that. <laughs> but I, I'm trying to say that you, to be with institution, one, two, three, four is the people from four ministries. That is the square. One, two, three, four. From finance ministry, from interior ministry, from the NESDB, which is the national planning everything under them. And, uh, and the other is a key finance institution about uh, the, the, the technical finance. So you have one, two, three, four, and which come into the board. So the board come from very heavy government. We have the representative from the civil society. And we have this. Just want to show this part that CODI is the organization where you have this formulation of the community from the national level to the regional level, provincial level, and the city level, and all the different subjects from issue. So CODI become a platform for all these linkages. Huh? And this linkage is also representing in the CODI structure of that uh, relevant area and issue. And you have a form of government here. You have an area base. Here we say A, B, C, D is the subcommittee. And it's overlaid by the subcommittee, where you have the government representative, community representative, experts, and so on. So it's all collaborative, uh, issue-based. The land and housing is one of them, welfare is one of them, this and that. The, the land and housing, the Baiman Kong subcommittee, in which I'm a chairperson, we have more than 10, more than 10 more committees. Uh, like if this is a land sharing project on the state railway land, you set one committee to deal with that. If it's about CONCAM, which has 
a particularity to do whatever necessary. You set one committee where you have the local authority, the network over there to work together. You see how the structure is working. So the, 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 the code is sort of spread for this collaboration and the community process. And this is important to say at the end that the code is support community and collaborated local development action at large scale. And as a result, community also support and political, politically protect. So this kind of, I just want to say that the kind of progressive institution like this, of course it's not easy, very difficult to go against the tide of things, no? But if people feel this is your organization, it's a friendly organization, it's a, it's a clear organization that support you, people will protect you. And in the midst of what Cody people may get confused, may be too stagnant, this and that. I mean, the, the big space that has been created would allow the possible movement to go. If you are not a part of the going, then you'll be left behind. Yeah? So it's not an institution of the conventional uh, understanding. And I just urge BPU to go more support for this kind of institution to allow new freedom for the people development. And Ban Mung Kong will be just one of them. Yeah, thank you. It's amazing. Each time I hear you, and I've heard you quite a few times, yeah. I must say, I always learn new things. So thank you so much. And also for putting so much learning in a very succinct way. So I think for some of our students who are lucky to hear a little bit about the process, but I think the way Sumsuk put things together was provoking again. And especially those last few slides there where you're sort of projecting forward. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions. I know I have one, but I'm going to be patient and, <laughs> and wait for others. Uh, thank you so much for that presentation, Sumsuk. I've got two questions, and I'm happy for you to ask both or to just choose one. Thinking back to the 1992 to 2000 transition, I guess one of my questions is, if you have a government office, let's say responsible for housing, that's interested in replicating a model like this, thinking back to that moment of going from what I understood to be kind of like a public institution, or like led by public actors, into this hybrid, non-public, semi-public kind of space, and I know it's complicated, and I don't know how well I've understood it, but like, what were the main, like, what's the hurdles? Or if you could just speak a bit more to that process of, like, top-down to a more horizontal organization and any kind of key lessons that you learned in that process. My second question, which you may or may not have time to get into, is I'm interested in the financing of this, which I know for Ruth <laughs> is complicated. Um, but if you can speak at all to how, for governments, again, that might be interested in, like, moving towards a model that speaks to this. Like, I understood you've got community-based savings groups that feed into the process, but could you just go into a little bit more depth about the balance of funding? Like, where does it come from? And does it rely on a state that is willing to invest, like, substantial amounts of money into public housing? Or are there, like, how, how do you manage that with communities? Okay, the, the, the second question first. Huh? Yeah. I forgot the first one. <laughs> <laughs> the second question is that uh, if we're going to make a, a big number of housing possible, we need to uh, find how the finance, housing finance is working, right? Uh, and how the finance comes from. In, in our case, uh, first, it has to be, to be the finance from the people, huh? since uh, the start from the savings. Start to build the community fund and the co-op, uh, which manage the fund, their fund and the outside fund. So the institution to manage the two systems of funding okay. yeah, to go together, right? Co-op is like that. The co-op also have a sense of the collective ownership and so on, but just talk about finance. Uh, th then the people finance and then the subsidy. Mm -hmm. Subsidy is a ban, and no chain with the subsidy because all housing activity in the world has subsidy. Yeah. 
but most of the subsidy have been designed such a way to cut the, the price of housing for the contractor, so the price is cheaper, right? We design the subsidy in such a way that the subsidy would go to the community. Subsidy would be the first part for the uh, upgrading, reblocking in the same area, the subsidy will be a little less. Uh, for reconstruction, the, the subsidy will be a little more. For relocation, the subsidy is more. For the flat, subsidy is more. But put together, it has the average, yeah? for something like that. And housing subsidy, for some who don't want a loan, you can use maybe 30,000 baht, which is around one ten thousand uh, one thousand pounds for rebuilding your house and do it gradually. That's possible. And for the the capacity building for the NGO to work with the community. So you have the subsidy of about three thousand dollar per unit and, and you uh, redesign the subsidy into different categories. And you pass the subsidy to the community. So Community all over the country know if you're going to do a reconstruction in your slum, what would be the subsidy for per family? If you have 100 families, you will divide by 100 families. So you can plan uh, the infrastructure upgrading to that subsidy. So subsidy is to let the people handle that. So you know the size of the subsidy. Most of the government in the upgrading project allow the world never tell uh, the subsidy because it's the government who make plan. Mm. Spend it. Here, the people uh, get the transfer and they are the ones who uh, manage it, spend it uh, to the hand of the people and people manage. Yeah? This, this is a subsidy. And then we have a revolving fund which is uh, uh, acting like a bank uh, for the people to loan it uh, up to a certain ceiling. Right? $10,000? No, now more, maybe 15 thousand for the time being. So there's a ceiling in which people could follow, but it has to be a collective. It, it goes to the group. It doesn't go to the individual. Huh? For collective uh, management. It forces the people for collective management. And this is very important. Yeah. For me, this is the key to slum planning. A collective management, in, in India, you have a, a number of what you call regularization now happen. Equalization allows the individual to have their right for individual plot. We avoid that, yeah, on purpose. Huh? Because when you you allow the people, the individual plot, to be secure and to have more full right, the market will come automatically. So it's like upgrading the area for the market. <laughs> for sale. For sale. Huh? And we have to protect that by collective uh, loans and, and, and ownership. So this is a finance system. We, so we have a revolving fund. We have a subsidy. Yet the fisc come from the fiscal budget. It it gives like a block subsidy per family, but we create the block into different categories and pass it to community. I don't know whether you understand this, no? Yeah. But but playing with finance is the key, key to all this. You give finance to individual, finish. Huh? And the market always have that system, go to only individual. No, we have to do the group. So the group own it together. And you cannot sell it, except you sell to the group. And the group can please select the new possibility. Sorry. Yeah, okay. I know you are around. Thank you. Sorry, sorry everyone. <laughs> Otherwise, I embrace everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. It's great. Okay, one last question. Uh, oh, then maybe we'll stop this, the filming and then we can continue. I think there's an issue. Oh. Okay, then we continue. I was just curious, I wanted to jump off that just with the funding. I was paying attention to the, the mechanism you mentioned in there where when the loans are given, then the, the interest margin is used to reinvest. That helps with the welfare, the community development, the different pieces. And I was just curious if there have ever been moments of tension. Does that ever start to 
fray away from the collective, people starting to see themselves as separate strands, and how do they resolve that and come back together? Mm. Well, if you ask any community people whether you want to be in a collective, in a co-op, nobody wants it. <laughs> Everybody would want a freedom. You know, why I have to bother with this? It is very difficult family there, or we make argument this and that. But everybody has to compromise. Yeah. So the poor also have heart. <laughs> not happy with that. But it's a false collective, sorry. Okay. If you're not happy with the collective, you go to the market. Yeah, a lot of housing arrangement in the market. No? Uh, here is a system to build community. We are talking about community. It's not just housing arrangement. Yeah, it's a system of community. Because the poor, when you try to to get housing, you have to develop many things as a group because the income of individual is lower than uh, uh, the the bar anyway. No, it is lower. So if you individualize the poor to get individual housing, although you you give subsidy to that, no, uh, they cannot keep it in the long term except you. Uh, link them together as a group. And the group would have social development if they one family have problem, the other how they exist and so on. So with the, the, the problem of uh, the economic problem of the poor, uh, you can only compensate it with the social wealth. Uh, with the social wealth. Uh, the, the assistance, the uh, instruction, uh, you know, the a more flexible uh, way of payment and so on. In our case, uh, the, we charge the group uh, 4% and they add 2% margin on top of that. So the member pays 6%. The 2% is used as a buffer. Huh? So you have unsteady payment across all the poor. They're not paying 100% no way. <laughs> so you have the buffer to, uh, to, to adjust themselves for uh, 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 to deal with the slow repayment, difficult repayment, whatever, and then pay us 100%. And this is why we can collect 97%, yeah, because of the 2% buffer. But if the community manage well, you have, you have uh, profit, you have uh, extra. So you use this uh, 2% for welfare, for scholarship, for whatever you want to do together as a group, yeah, at least to start with. And, and many of them able to do that, right? Okay. Thank you. Question, finance is the key, definitely. This is, if we understand how to find a way in which the finance allow all this uh, possibility to happen, how finance can be designed. We're lucky to get the special kind of finance after a lot of negotiation. It's a finance that allow us a little more flexibility than the stick government budget, yeah? But you need to negotiate <laughs> everything. Thank you for that amazing presentation. Uh, so my question was more towards, so I saw in your presentation that you also presented about sort of a shift happening towards medium rights buildings now. Yeah. So um, what would you say as Cody and how have you adapted to, so how do you adapt or just navigate through these um, and this conflict of visions mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that exist in yeah, the city yeah, with yeah. like state driven visions, which yeah. maybe of high rise. I'd like to speak about it, yeah, yeah, definitely. As architect, also, I yeah. want to work on the land sharing project for so many years. Yeah. We, 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 we try the new project and, and could come in more than one. Uh, the new kind of design of the high rise uh, apartment in such a way that we said, how about we bring community into the upper floor, right? The kind of co collective space, com common space, where pe uh, children can run, where you can sell things a little bit and so on. You transform the kind of uh, the, the, the life space of the community into those floors, okay? And we have a design. I don't have it with me in my uh, PowerPoint. I can send to Helen later on, yeah? So there's a design which uh, we try to uh, to make uh, the uh, medium rise more a community housing in the form, in the physical plan. Because physical planning for people housing in most of the country is so poor, so boring. Yeah. It's just a cell, it's just like jail. Yeah. And you have a small corridor going, you know. 
very uncreative and nobody wants to stay. You ask any slum community people in Thailand, nobody wants to stay with that. <laughs> sort of low caste and something like that. But you cannot avoid that because the, the, the city becomes a more and more high density. Yeah? So you need to make a new kind of flat in which uh, it has more uh, social space, more intellectual, yeah? more lively sales things and so on. And this is, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working now, this is uh, looking forward. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the first thing, and uh, very interesting design, and we also try to create the lower floor where you could open for the economic opportunity. And all the management have to be done between the community co-op and the private sector. You know, more equal relationship, because we need subsidy. What I tell, oh, a nice space, living space, social space, all cost. Uh, uh, you know, it, 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 it has a cost involved. And huh? uh, you have to pay for that. Right? And pay in such a way that the, the lower floor is more open for this economic generation, for the people in time, and for the cost subsidy uh, to be happening. So before I'm coming here, I, I, I speak to one of the rich guys. And, and try to convince him to come into the advice. Well, I told them that, I told him that if we people who work with the poor community trying to do this business arrangement, it, it would fail, definitely. This is no skill. <laughs> but he can do it. But how to, to bridge his ability, our ability and the people's ability. And this will be a new threat in which no Great maintenance costs. Uh, we're not going to hire a private sector to do all the maintenance. Uh, it's a chain. Huh? We have a lot of people here. Yeah. So how the people themselves take care of uh, the maintenance, block by block, all the lift, all the children program, all the elderly program, or whatever. So it, it's all a mixed social arrangement mm -hmm. in which people are the actors. So I like doing this. <laughs> I hope I'm not too old to <laughs> see this happen. <laughs> but this is what we try to do, and uh, a number of projects are like that, uh, other than negotiation. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for this. Yeah. Um, I was curious about the rural one program, mm -hmm. and under that you specifically said that in one case the land was taken from the rich, and I was curious how that worked out. And second, I, I was curious if like the rural housing program in your experience is going to potentially help secure livelihoods in rural areas and prevent forced migration into cities and if that's, yeah. if that's something that you're developing. Yeah, you see, in the past, in, in Sri Lanka, for instance, we have a, a scheme for the rural housing. And then other countries, and we focus on the houses. Yeah. And the houses. My colleague also, in the beginning, they focus on houses. No, it's the whole human habitat in the whole world, the given world. And how to secure land and production and uh, system, uh, uh, physical arrangement, social arrangement, physical uh, economic arrangement. What is hard for the last person <laughs> 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 to talk <have> me <laughs> before that? Uh, I think the human habitat, using the right word for this, is a uh, human settlement. Yeah. Human settlement means a system of human to be settled in that particular local. Huh? And able to have a dignity, to have their livelihood, their economic situation, live with the ecological system, and they are the actors to, uh, to make all the things uh, 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 working. Yeah? Uh, we, we are going for this direction. So we cannot go for only physical change. We need to go for a more holistic change, a system change, a system change, in which people are able to stay there, which is not enough. When we say people to, to be able to stay there, we stay only the elderly people. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> the young people like us know we, we want to go to the city huh? to stay in the condominium and so on. So all the children, all the young people now are not staying in their, uh, in their hometown any longer. So we have to make it come back. 
you need to find a way that the blood going into this organ, uh, the, the young people come back and want to come back uh, with a better social system and so on. So we, we, we are now trying this direction. Uh, and it happened to most of the country in Asia, I would say, that young people are not very happy with their <laughs> with their village. Yeah. And why living in a city facing COVID and disease and you know difficulty and cheating and so on? No? Why not go into a clean, nice environment and uh, and deal, deal with the people into a new modern society? And this is a deal. <laughs> we are pushing people <laughs> to go in this direction for the time being. At least the rural development is high. Yeah? Not just houses, but the, the, the system. Yeah. Uh, okay. One more. I have one simple question. I don't know how much a problem uh, in Thailand is the inflation. Mm -hmm. And how do you deal with that with the community savings? Well, in Thailand, it's not so not too bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not too bad. Mm -hmm. I cannot remember the percentage, but uh, we after the economic crisis, in which we able to set up <laughs> COVID, <laughs> we used the crisis to make a chip. At that time, it was uh, quite bad. But after that, it's a good training, so they're quite cautious. And the country has a lot of research money, I mean, up to the fourth or the fifth of the world, something like that. Now, so it's not that bad. Sorry, there are several countries who face that. So the, the community saving, I think the, the question of interest is not the point. Uh, the point is to, to link, link them into a regular uh, behavior and to build a collective financial system. Uh, uh, a collective pool uh, in which is a pool of power to do things together through that financial uh, collective system. That's more important. Yeah? So, of course, uh, people are so practical. If somebody wants to get the loan, they charge the loan and they have certain margin yeah, for uh, between the loan and the savings. Yeah? And that, arrangement like that. And also there are arrangements in which we call the welfare fund. We have been quite successful uh, supporting the welfare fund. The welfare fund is something like uh, everybody contribute one bar a day. So in one month is 30 bar, which is one dollar, yeah? about one dollar. So one dollar a month uh, without Expecting, it's like they said, it's like you go to a temple and you contribute into uh, the, the temple for the money. Yeah. And this is community money. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so it, it's, it's become a, a, a pool in which you, everybody pay one dollar per month to build the welfare fund. Welfare fund is to cover people from birth to death for everybody. And this is what we try to promote that. Why public welfare? Public welfare, of course, there are certain things to do. But we need community welfare because people are living together to take care of each other. Huh? And actually, they have done that. If somebody is sick, uh, the, the, the neighbor would have to take care of that. If the children don't have the money to school, uh, the community also have to take care of that. So let the whole community become the welfare unit for everybody. Yeah. And you find the arrangement to keep your people healthy and okay. And if you understand this welfare, a family is also a welfare. Yeah. You don't need to pay when you are young and so on. Mm -hmm. The forest is also a welfare. Huh? The ecological system is also a welfare. So welfare has a big meaning in the, in the rural environment. <coughs> but you need some finance huh? in order to, to link with that. So how about make the welfare of the rural community uh, something that could take care of everybody collectively? I, in the, in the uh, 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 Asian or Oriental society, uh, we have a different way of taking care of the elders. 
but our policy maker always follow uh, the, uh, the way to take care of the old people from the Western society. Mm. Which, of course, we have to do that up to a certain level. But the elderly people in community, they stay with their family. Huh? So the point is how uh, the, the young, the, the, the youth, uh, the single mother, uh, the, the elderly people, the sick people, whatever, they could live together in the community and they have this welfare pool to help each other. Yeah? That's more the Asian society. Yeah? And if I don't reboot it into a system, with additional finance, so we're able to negotiate with the government. Uh, they add a little more money into that welfare pool. Yeah? And this I can say that you can do it in your country very easily. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. okay. I think we can thank so, so, so much for this. <laughs>